Okay. That's the entrance. Okay, so let me introduce it uh, just for a second, so it'll be official. Uh, hello. Hey, hello. Uh, I'm here with Dr. Palmer, Dr. Richard Palmer, and we also have his son, Stuart Palmer, in the background, just in case he might chime in once in a while. Uh, we are here in Pew Hall, the University of Florida. Today is uh, September 4th, 2022, and we're going to go through some slides, or actually some images, and Dr. Palmer is going to give us a, a full description of what we're seeing. So, Dr. Palmer, here's our first image. Uh, go ahead. That's the entrance to the TRIO Center. It uh, It's changed a little bit from that picture. They now have the name TRIO across the front section of it, uh, and, and the entrance is at a well, the building was originally designed to be about a half story into the ground. And so if you notice, there's a little bit of a dip up in, as you walk in. And it, the, the entrance then uh, into the lobby. Off to your left is the uh, lecture auditorium, which is the higher part of the building that you see. And the... Uh, one office is at the window beside the uh, the entrance to the right is uh, is an office for this associate director, and the nameplate or the dedication plate is is uh, off to the left as you as you view it. Um, there were originally some uh, low hanging picture. Of lights in, in the uh, middle of the uh, walkway, but they took those out and put the light there in the corner. The left-hand side of the entrance, is a t there are steps that go up, and you could enter the uh, auditorium from, from outside of the building. You can also enter the auditorium from inside of the building. Dedication plate, uh, as, as we saw, in the first picture, off to the left, it says it's the Center for Training, Research, and Education for Environmental Occupations. It gives a lot of other information there. The uh, owner of the building, is, who it was constructed by, uh, the governor of the state at the time was Ruben Askew, and it's uh, the Department of General Services. Uh, then there's the, the Board of Regents listed. And uh, the uh, president of the universities at, uh, at the time was Dr. Robert, Robert Masters, Masterson. Marston. And it indicates the Clements, Clements Rumpel architects. Now, they were a Jacksonville firm. And uh, they designed the building to be compatible in the environment, the environment in which was across the street immediately to the east is a, the city's Kanapaha wastewater treatment plant. Uh, and part of the treatment facility requires a um, retention basin for uh, raw sewage in case of breakdown. And that is uh, uh, off uh, beside, almost to the uh, southwest of the TRIO Center. The TRIO Center is on a 20-acre piece of land that the University of Florida uh, rented at least for 100 years from the, from the Gainesville Regional Utility. As you enter the building, you, you go into an open area there with the lobby. Um, as you look through there, at, as you, are, you see through glass, and you see to the outside and to the uh, canteen, which is a part of the building, and there's a bridge, if you'll notice it, with, uh, that's covered. Uh, and that bridge itself is 65 feet in length. That gives you some idea of the scale, uh, if you want some idea of the scale of the building. 
And as you enter, off to your right is the exit, and off to the left is the auditorium. Now, on the right, it's interesting, most people you, uh, n must know that all exits from a building should be doors open outward. Now, it's strange that when you open the door to the, that you see there on your right, uh, it's outward from where you are, so you're actually leaving the interior of the building, and yet you're still enclosed in the building. It's a, it's a very unique design, and uh, there's, uh, there's room for uh, coordinators on just the left there, and uh, there are two spaces. And what we the administrative suite is off to our right in this in this particular picture, and I don't know that you can see it. As you walked in the door, as you in the front of the building, that's what you see the interior there, and just immediately to your right. Uh, if you'll imagine with me just a moment that there's a, a hanging curtain, only it's metal. Uh, on the wall above that door, and that allow that allows you to shut off that whole wall. And the reason for the large opening is that we uh, had planned, and we had many many occasions where hundreds of people needed to be registered, and they could enter in the lobby and have a wide opening. Now that's the administrative suite with the uh, secretaries spaced out without walls, <laughs> and uh, then uh, we also noticed in the front entrance there was a, the, the one window of the associate uh, director at the other side hidden away from it as the direct director's office. And two or three, there's a door from that administrative suite that goes out into the hallway and it also opens outwardly. And uh, the when you get out in the hall, the restrooms and the uh, conference room there. We mentioned that you see, you're looking as you as you walked in the lobby. You're looking at you, you can't see that it as clearly as this. But this is when I mentioned the canteen. Uh, it it is a circular building, and it. The idea that it is all poured concrete was developed because of the environment in which it was built, and the architects realized the massive amounts of concrete used in the wastewater treatment plant. So they were trying to be sure that it fit the environment. And this is a window. Uh, it looks like there's a pole off to your left in that window. It's sort of yellow, but that's actually a, a joining of the the, the uh, when we, the uh, plastic material joining those those glasses to keep them from shaking. This is the lecture auditorium, and I mentioned as we entered the building there was a there were stairwells off to the left, and those stairwells could uh, would allow you to enter this building from the the, the left hand side. This is the back of the auditorium to your left, and the uh, lecturer stands in the front, in front of that white screen. Uh, that was a, uh, originally, the architects misunderstood what you were looking for, for a lecture auditorium. They, they actually built a uh, stage up there. Uh, the stage is now covered up, and they use it for storage and for uh, electronic equipment. And these, these, this was uh, celebrating 1977 to 2017. They had a celebration of the 40th anniversary of the building. And it has uh, just a, a jumble and uh, all sorts of things and people uh, haven't needed to look at it too closely. So that's just a, a picture that they have in the, inside the lobby. As that's the, if you le left, as you leave the lobby, the building, as, uh, the door swings outward, and you're looking down a long hallway. That hallway is actually 
in, in the outside covered with part of the built, the overhanging of a cantilevered well, ceiling over the wall, over the walkway. And uh, just to your left, the, the uh, turn through those, uh, that entrance is the beginning of that uh, bridge that goes from this part of the building to into the canteen. And all the way down to the end of the hallway, there's another entrance into the, uh, well, another exit out at the back of that hallway and off to the right uh, are classrooms, flexible classrooms, permanent solid wall classrooms, and the uh, room for the coordinators. There's a, a pod there on the left. It actually looks like, well, it sits over the water. You can see that the water is flowing under it. That's for a co two coordinators. And that there are two different pods, so there would be room for four prof professional people. This is the this is just as you get outside the left hand uh, the the uh, executive office I mean the entrance uh, administrative office that is the conference room and there's a there's a walkway all the way around it in the back you see the entrance to probably uh, the ladies restroom and the men's restroom is on the other side and then um, it, it comes back around it it's it, it's a separate. Actually, those, that wall is really outside of the building. And that's the interior of the conference room that we just saw with all the, with the clock so that you know when, how, how many, how soon the, the meeting is going to be over with. Okay. And then the bulletin board for tacking and so forth. This is one of our flexible area classrooms that can be subdivided into two or three places. Now. This, being, this picture will be seen from the exterior after a while, and that wall is not, is not the same height at the top of the building. It dips down, and in between, there's the, those glass walls out have our door openings, and you can open it so that wind will move through from the water on the, uh, in the pond outside. Created... The heat of the water in the wintertime creates an upward flow, and the coolness of the water in the summertime brings the water down, air down. And it will actually create flow through the building. So we had a cool building, an eight, uh, what, what people would refer to today as a green building. But it was green long before anybody thought of green. And one other thing that I were reminded this part of the building is a half floor into the ground. And when, we, uh, when the architects had the, the gentleman drill the, a grid, they, they drilled holes every 25 feet to see what was any obstruction to, to the downstairs uh, below the building. And it turns out that they did not find anything. But the first change order that we had in, in the uh, contract was $7,500 to remove rocks that were not found with the with drilling of the grid. And those rocks are, were placed in the area we, we will see maybe after a while. They're part of the landscaping. It gives, to me, it gives a little bit of an oriental look to the picture, to the building. That's, uh, that's another view of what I was just talking about. That's a planter just outside the building, and that's the concrete uh, dip down so that you could get a little bit more light in, and the windows open. This is a, the, one of the smaller buildings. There are folding doors that can be opened and closed to create three different instructional set areas in that larger area. If you'll notice the tracks above in the ceiling, uh, it's maybe difficult to see them, but those tracks, the folding doors pull out and close the wall, out building. The, the, the folding doors are in recessed in the, in the wall to the one to the right and come across that track halfway through in between those uh, electric uh, lights. There was a, an idea that part of uh, wastewater treatment and, and, uh, and water treatment 
the need for a, an executive uh, could, uh, could visual laboratory. And this has a uh, negative pressure hood. And actually, we never really used it uh, to do anything with the wastewater. But uh, one of the professors in pharmacy came out and did some research on time-released pills in our laboratory at one time. And as we first, my first comment about the long hallway, this is the, the north end of that long hallway. And you'll notice there's another bridge up to the, the uh, canteen level. Canteen level is above the floor, flooring of the main section of the building. And the um, at, at rear entrance, you see this, the railing on the wall back there, the rear entrance indicates that the wall, out, exterior is a little higher in the back than, it, it, than the entrance, uh, the exterior door is higher in the back than it is in the front by at least a half floor. And that's uh, the bridge up. To, and by the by, those, those, those railings around there, the water is below there. You can see the water in there if you, if you look closely. And that door is into the uh, hallway. To the right of that is the laboratory. And uh, back to the left is the entrance into the canteen, or one of the entrances. This is the large demonstration area. Um, but I hadn't mentioned earlier, or I haven't mentioned earlier, uh, parts of the building were uh, intended to be removable without damaging the structure of the building. And if you look to the straight ahead of you there, or to the right of you, there's large movable doors, and those, those doors can actually be taken out. There is an overhead crane on the orange colored track and heavy, heavy equipment. You could actually, you could put an 18 wheeler inside the demonstration area remove the heavy equipment that you needed, take the truck out, and then put it on the ground. Now, there's a faint uh, gray spot that is a trough. The trough is in case you, you're working with a wastewater treatment system and you have it messed up, you could dump that in and it, finally, it would flow by gravity to the uh, treatment plant across the street. So the, the architects had a lot, of, a lot of thinking to do. One of our early on, in fact, uh, we got into the business of uh, cross-connection control before the finish of the building. Uh, the uh, first thing that happened after our planning session was an engineer from the water department came up and asked, do you... I didn't know that the, that the university was involved in such a program. Would you be able to do a program for field distribution of water supply? And we finally worked it out. And that led to our major concern of backflow prevention and cross-connection control. And those devices that you see are uh, backflow devices. They're mounted on Rollable, rolling, ro rolling platforms with a catch basin below them. There are three different types of devices mounted on each of those platforms, and the, you can uh, attach water hose to them, and uh, the water goes into the platform and flows on the floor back to the sewer plants. Uh, we, we started uh, the backflow program was begun after the building was uh, completely constructed. The cross-connection control was a series of seminars we held all over the state um, prior to the completion of the building. The roof of the canteen and the exterior view from inside, uh, the, the word canteen, we did not we, we had occasions where 
food service need, was needed, but we didn't want a kitchen. So we have what is called a, a hot table and catered meals out to the, can, to the uh, canteen. And um, it's amazing how much concrete there is just in the roof of that building. There's almost 250 yards of concrete in the roof of the building. That's a, it, it's circular in nature. Out, it, it's, it's not circular inside there, but it is outside. You see it as a circle. But they made a, almost a square out of it <laughs> inside. Yeah, looking, looking down from an aerial or looking at the logo of the building, which is actually just an aerial view of the building itself, it's an ellipse, and that canteen bridged out into the middle of the, uh, the reflecting pond is round. Uh, but it is, it's an interesting structure. They squared it off on the inside with the glass walls mm -hmm. and uh, what, what little um, solid walls there were. Uh, it, it's mostly glass on like three and three quarter sides. But it is. It's, it's a, it, was, it was a neat part of my contribution to this, like I said, as a child. <laughs> it was a neat building to roam around in when, uh, when it was being built and then shortly after completion. Now, there we have gone back to the balcony off of the square, square lunchroom is complete the circle. And the muddy look is... Um, has been cleared up because they now have a, a, a fountain inside the, the water that keeps it fairly oxygenated. But um, for a while we had some real problems with uh, algae growth and that was part of the problem right there. You see it, it doesn't look as good as it does today. There, the, those rocks as you see out there, those were the ones that were taken from outside, underneath the building and just placed in there. That, that That's particularly the area where I uh, look at it and think of it as uh, oriental in a sense. Um, now, and a comment here, the architect had designed it to be compatible to the circular um, clarifiers and uh, uh, oxygenators in the treatment plant across the street. And they were, when they saw them their first time, they were solid concrete, and that's why they designed the building. And then one, one day the architect was on campus and they were painting those buildings and he was heart sick. <laughs> and, and there's where that dip in that wall is. You can see where, you have to look closely. Yeah, the architect thought he designed the perfect companion piece for the building across the way. Because mm -hmm. when he viewed the Kanapa Treatment Center, of course, it was raw, cast, and placed concrete, and, and he didn't, you know, it was precast. Anyway, he, he didn't know that the specs called for painting it. So I personally think this building looks better without the, uh, the industrial beige paint on it. So it's a, it's a winner. Now we've we've gone around to the right from the front entrance, and that is back entrance. Um, they left a wall. Uh, the window is recessed there, off to the left, and that uh, is part of the shows of the cantilever of the of the of the concrete. And you can't see it here, but one of the rocks that they just decided not to remove just off to the right of that concrete walkway, part of the concrete walkway was packed in around that rock. So it, it adds another uh, sort of a unique feature to some of the uniqueness of the building. So that's the backside. We were inside just a little while ago where all the backflow devices were and the overhead crane was. And that, uh, that wall the, is, they're, they're, the doors open completely so that, as I said, you can put an 18-wheeler in there. And those, there's that stone that I just mentioned. Um, and that is corrugated metal. And that part of the building could be taken out and you could move, make additional space if you, if you wanted to build more without having to redo the structure itself. That was taken care of in several different locations in the 
auditorium was the same facility. The classroom, I mean, the coordinator spaces were the same. And, and I don't know why they made, well, they made it compatible, the conference room that, sitting out in the open. That's a shot of the, of the canteen, and, and we were up looking out, and now we're looking in from the grounds. And it's just, uh, it's, it's a tropical look. In, in 40 plus years, it's grown up and the landscaping has become quite nice. It was, yeah. it was pretty barren yeah. in the beginning. So they've, they've taken care of it and it, it does obscure the view of the building itself, but it's just this thing. Kind of one, one thing I would I just, uh, somewhere we'll get it in, but that's, those are old ancient pine trees. Uh, and they had, they fenced them off because if you, put too many construction vehicles around there, those trees would have been killed. So they fenced them off to keep them from being damaged. Took care of a lot of the trees that were there. It, it, the, uh, the outside... I think that's basically looking up from the bridge, Dad. We're looking at the... Uh, the... No, that's, that's across that's across the water. It is. And, uh, back at the lobby and, the and into the lobby. The lobby is in the lower part of that. And the upper part of the auditorium uh, is there, and they put the air conditioning units on top. And there's a ladder going up. The, it's white, so you could distinguish it. So that's uh, that's this one view. And that those oak tr those pine trees back there, those are fancy fi uh, pine trees that you can't find in very many places anymore in Florida. Do you know the name of it? Is it a loblolly? It's not a loblolly, is it? I don't think it's a loblolly. Well, there they are. <laughs> and that's a long view of this. Um, oh, that's a view of the wastewater treatment plant across the street. That's, that's painted circles. If you see those big circles over there, that's what the uh, architects were trying to be compatible with. And they... Anyway, those are the tree, the big pine trees. They're still there, I think. Oh, that that was the entrance, the outside entrance into the uh, uh, auditorium. It too had corrugated metal, so that uh, if you needed to expand and make a larger auditorium, you could do so without doing any damage to the um, structural uh, building. Okay, I think that was the last one. Uh, do you have anything else you want to add to this? Uh, I don't think so. I don't have any, I mean, I, I, I've, I've t talked out. I probably could have talked more, but I tried to limit the, what I was saying. Well, um, did this building, I mean, it does seem pretty advanced for the time that it was built. Uh, it seems like more what they would be thinking about today rather than 40 years ago? Well, it was a, it was a 1970, well, the, the bill that passed the state legislature creating the, the uh, center was in 1974. Now, there was a, a little bit of, I haven't covered anything else in there, and I'll just mention briefly, shortly after the building was completed. Now, short, shortly after the uh, bill was passed, a year or so, less than a year, I got a call from the uh, lieutenant governor who introduced the bill in the Senate, telling me he had now become the lieutenant governor and was responsible for uh, finances. And he said, everybody knew how important that center was to me. And when we were cutting money, I had to redline your money. So the building is no longer funded. And uh, one day at a Christmas party, one of the vice presidents of the university said, Richard, you got to go back out there and get some money. Get that money back. And I did. And it made the, the, the chancellor upset with me, but I had the, the backing of the uh, uh, Secretary of Education, so I, I 
maintain my position. See, that's the kind of thing I don't think I need to say. But anyway. What is, uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about the... Well, we're back to the entrance, and I think that's it. That, did I cover it good? Covered okay. Uh, related to the, yeah, yeah, it's great. Well, thank you very much, Dr. Palmer and Stuart Palmer. <laughs> um, and that will, my name is Deborah Hendricks. I don't think I put that in there. But anyway, um, I think that will uh, conclude this part.